Hi there, this is Elon from MetroBoard and I wanted to show you today our new bearing spacer. So this is a standard bearing spacer you see here and it's 10 millimeters high, but we also wanted to offer a bearing spacer for our drive wheel, which has a different spacing between the inner and outer bearing. So unfortunately a standard bearing spacer will not work. So we made a custom one here and, um, and it can be installed on any of our existing ABEC 11 drive wheels. Um, but I'm going to show you in the next step how you actually need to modify your drive wheel pulley to be able to use this. Um, so let's go to that step. Okay, so the first step we gotta do is we gotta take the drive wheel off of the truck. Uh, so we just gotta take your normal uh, skate tool. It's a half inch driver if you don't have a skate tool. And we'll go ahead and take the axle nut off. Okay. Take your axle nut off, take your washer off, your axle washer, and take the wheel off. Now typically the um, inner bearing will just fall out, so that's fine, just take it off, because we're going to have to take the bearings out. The outer bearing is still in here, so we got to get that one out, so we just kind of put it on the truck axle and just kind of wiggle it off like you typically do. Okay, so now we have the drive wheel taken off with the bearings removed from both sides. So to be able to use these new bearing spacers, we need to make one modification to this drive wheel pulley. Um, unfortunately, the way they were originally built, the inner diameter here is a little bit too close to the size of the bearing spacer. So if you were to put the bearing spacer in without making this modification, you are probably going to be very close to potentially binding with the drive pulley. So the bearing spacer is going to be too close to the inner diameter of this drive pulley. So what we need to do is we need to enlarge that hole. So I'm going to show you in the next step how we enlarge this hole. Okay. Okay. So what we have here is we have our drive wheel and a drill press here. It's best to use a drill press and not a hand drill because it'll make sure you get a straighter hole and you won't get off center that way as well. Uh, and you want to set your drill press to about, uh, 500 to 1000 RPM, no faster than that, otherwise it may bind as you're trying to drill. Um, and basically we need to drill this out to a half inch uh, drill size, but uh, unfortunately you can't do it with one step, so you need to step it and do it in two steps. So basically what you're going to do is use a 15, 32 inch drill bit first, and then we're going to go to the half inch after that just so it doesn't bind, otherwise it may bind. So definitely do it in two steps to make sure this thing doesn't bind as you're drilling. So what you want to do is you want to get in your drill press and uh, you might need to adjust the height of your platform depending on how high um, it is relative to the drive wheel but you want to get it kind of fairly close to the hole so that you don't have to go too far once you start getting this thing going and we're going to go ahead and tighten that and lock it in place okay. and you can actually just hold it with your hand so you're going to basically first just get it centered to the existing hole as best as you can okay just kind of let the wheel be free there and then firmly grab it, okay, now turn on your drill press. You may want to use a glove, but if you're steady enough with your hand, you can just firmly hold it with your hand, but be careful, of course. Okay. Nice and slow. Don't rush the process. Through. Keep holding it firmly and then slowly pull it out. Okay, big mess here, but mission accomplished. Um, so now what we got to do is we got to switch to the half inch drill bit. So carefully tilt this up. Be careful not to ding the pulley teeth as you do this. Okay, so you see, so far we've just enlarged it. Uh, to a 15 se second inch hole, but we need to go a little bit further all the way up to half inch. So let's go ahead and switch the drill bit out. You will have a bunch of metal shavings you'll have to clean up, but um, just be careful not to cut yourself on them as you're removing them. So let's go ahead and change up the drill bit. So 
of the half inch drill bit. You put in as deep as you need to. And go ahead and secure that. Okay. You might want to clean out any debris you have in the wheel, any remaining uh, debris from the last drilling session just so it doesn't have any extra work to do. So again, carefully slide it in there. You might need to kind of tilt the wheel a little bit. Get this thing, there you go. Kind of move the table around until you get it in the spot. So once you get it roughly where you need to be, you can raise the table a little bit so you can get close to the hole. Oops. Okay. Make sure the table is firmly locked in place. Okay. So again, we want to kind of find our center first, okay, before you turn the drill on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now that we're locked in the right position, go ahead and firmly grab the wheel and let the, the uh, handle back off the drill press, and we're going to go turn it on. Nice and steady, again, don't rush the process, go nice and slow. You don't want this thing blind around you. back out. Okay, turn your drill press off. Okay, we made a big mess again, but again, mission accomplished. Um, you can loosen the platform a little bit and then very carefully tilt it up so you don't ding the pulley. So as you can see, let's put this out of the way. We have enlarged that hole to a half inch size hole. Okay, and this will give enough clearance for the uh, drive wheel bearing spacer. Okay, and we'll show that in the next step. Okay. And you will, of course, before you want to put this back on the scraper, you want to clean off any shavings and use a compressed or whatever it takes to get this thing clean. You don't want to put it together with any metal shavings still in the system. So definitely clean this up with compressed air or a wet wipe or whatever it's going to take to get all the metal shavings off. So after you're done machining the hole out to the half inch inner diameter, you definitely want to clean up any debris. So you can take some compressed air. Do this on both sides. Okay. And you should also take some kind of rag or a wet wipe or whatever and uh, clean out any debris or grease that still may be in there. Compressed air will do most of the work, but you want to make sure there's nothing left on the other side as well. So go ahead and just clean out that area the best you can. Okay. Also on the outside of the wheel, there might be a little bit of debris. So go ahead and use compressed air there as well. Throw any metal shavings in the pulley too, obviously. Okay. And now we're pretty clean on both sides. Should be good to go. Okay, so now we're ready to put everything back together. So let's see how that works. So before we actually put the wheel on, I'll just show you the order of things. So we're gonna put the axle washer back on, okay? The inner one, okay? Then we're gonna put the bearing on. And then here's the new bearing spacer for the dry wheel. Followed by the bearing, followed by the outer axle nut, sorry, the axle washer, and then followed by the axle nut itself, okay? All right, so that was just to show you how this whole system is going to work, but now we're going to do it with the wheel, of course. So let's take that all out. Okay, so we'll leave that one bearing in there so we can actually press the bearing into the outer hole. So you start with the outer bearing hole, okay? That bearing is now in there. Make sure the washer doesn't come 
loose. Sometimes it'll stick to the outer or to the bearing when you press it in. So make sure it's still there. Okay. Now we're going to put the inner bearing in, followed by the new drive wheel bearing spacer. And now the wheel. Okay. Now the axle washer for the outer bearing, the nut. Okay. So now here's where the beauty of the bearing spacer comes in. You just tighten it. Okay. Now you don't need to worry about over tightening or having it too loose. You just tighten it basically till it becomes impossible to tighten anymore. And the bearing spacer will prevent you from over tightening. And it'll have a tiny, tiny bit of slop. Watch. You just spin it, and the bearing spacer is doing its job. It's basically keeping you from over compressing the bearings to the point where it, they get squished and then don't turn so well. This also improves the sound quality while riding. We found that um, with this new bearing spacer on the drive wheel, you don't need to worry about exactly how tight the axle nut is. You just tighten it until it becomes pretty much impossible to tighten anymore. And this will help ensure that you have good sound quality while you're riding on the electric skateboard. And that's pretty much all it takes to get this new custom bearing spacer in your drive wheel. And uh, we think you'll appreciate the uh, improvement in sound quality and performance of the Metro board with this new change. Thanks for watching.